Today I've got a nice geometry problem. So let's see the setup. So suppose we've got this unit square. So let's make sure we know the side length of this square is one. And then inside of this, we have a quarter circle inscribed. And then we have these two rays going from the bottom left of the unit square. And they're situated so that this angle right here is 30 degrees and this angle right here is also 30 degrees. That means that this angle in the middle is another 30 degrees. Next up, we're gonna inscribe a circle up in the top right. And because of these angles down here, this inscribed circle will intersect with the rays at the same place that it intersects with this quarter circle. And then below this circle, we'll inscribe another circle, and then another circle, and another circle, and another circle, infinitely down. And our goal is to find the total area of all of these circles. So the so, so, so in other words, the area of the big circle, the area of the second circle, third, fourth, fifth, so on and so forth. Okay, so our first goal will be to find the radius of the large circle, and then we can build everything off of that. Okay, so let's start our diagram here. So let's go to the center of the large circle right here, and let's say we have a radius of r. So we might as well go down to this point on the circle right here, so there's our radius r. But then we also know that this distance right here is also r. Then transcribing this point down to the bottom edge of the to the bottom edge of the square, we see that this length is one minus r. Okay, so that's actually a good place to get started with the rest of this. Now we're going to complete a right triangle, and we'll do that by connecting this center of our largest circle down with this vertex of the square. So that would be something like this. Next up, the angle of this green line segment makes a 45 degree angle with this lower edge of the square, just because 30 and then plus 15. So that means we know the length of this green line segment. So let's maybe put that as this green box here. So that length will be the square root of two times one minus r. And we can get that from the Pythagorean theorem by noticing that this length is also r, bringing this over right here, seeing that this length is one minus r. So we've got this subsquare here that has side length one minus r, meaning it's diagonal, which is this green has length square root of two times one minus r. Okay, nice. <clears throat> And then to finish up the calculation for this bit, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle which I am outlining in red. Okay, great. So notice we've got this side length here down at the bottom. So that side length is one, given that it intersects this unit circle. So we'll have one squared plus this side length here, which is r squared equals this side length here squared. So that'll be two and then one minus r quantity squared. And maybe just so that we don't miss anything, we know that this is a right angle here because this yellow ray is tangent to the circle. Okay, nice. So that gives us a quadratic equation that we can solve for r, and this is pretty straightforward. So this will give us r squared plus one equals 2r squared plus 4r plus 2. After multiplying out this, and that should be 2r squared minus 4r plus 2. Okay, now we can move some things around, and we'll see that we have r squared minus 4r, and then plus 1 equals 0. And then we can solve this pretty easily with the quadratic formula, and we'll end up with 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. But then you can check that two plus the square root of three produces a circle that is too large, so it would not fit inside the square. So that means we keep the radius two minus the square root of three. And so now we're gonna find the radius of the second circle. And finding the radius of the second circle will set up a pattern for finding the radius of all of the rest of the circles. 
Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put a little line right here. So that's from the center of the second circle down to this yellow ray. Maybe we'll say the length of the second circle or the radius of the second circle is x. So we're shooting to find x. So that means this distance right here is also x. And then just to be clear, this distance up here is r. But now notice that this line segment here is parallel to our line segment here, meaning that this triangle with side length x and so on and so forth is similar to this triangle here. Okay, so let's maybe bring these triangles over here so that we have a feel for what these things look like. Okay. So that's maybe what we'll use as our larger triangle. So we know the whole hypotenuse of this larger triangle, and we know that by taking square root of two times one minus r like we had before. So I'm just gonna write that here. This is the square root of two and then one minus r. Great, then we know the base of this longer triangle is one, and the height of this longer triangle is r. Okay, so now let's put our x in here. So maybe I'll put it right here. So this is our x, which is what we want. Let's maybe be clear that that is one. Now we need to get a couple of other measurements. Or really we only need one other measurement so that we know what's going on. And perhaps this distance from this vertex here to this center will be the easiest to get. And that indeed is the square root of two, one minus r minus x. So something like that. But now from here we can set up a formula using similar triangles. So we'll do x over r, so that's the short length over this radius, must be the same as the square root of two, one minus r minus x over the square root of two, one minus r, so something like that. So let's note that these square roots of two cancel, so that's pretty nice. And then from there, we'll have x minus rx equals, so r minus r squared minus rx. Okay, so that's looking good. But let's notice that gives us an expression for x in terms of r. We have x equals r minus r squared. And so we could go up here and rewrite this as x equals r times one minus r which is, let's see, we have r and then one minus r will be something like negative one plus the square root of three. And this is the important takeaway. We have our new radius is our old radius times this number, negative one plus the square root of three. So this is gonna follow all the way down. So we've got radius r for our first circle. The second circle is radius r times minus one plus the square root of three. The radius of this third circle will be the radius of this second circle times minus one plus the square root of three and so on and so forth. And all of that will follow just from similar calculations. Okay, so let's summarize that on the next board and then finish it off. So this is what we devised on the last board. We calculated the radius of the first circle to be two minus minus root three. Then the second circle was that radius times negative one plus root three. The third circle was our previous radius times that same number, but putting this all together, this is minus one plus root three squared times two minus root three. And so similarly, our nth circle will be minus one plus root three to the n minus one times two minus root three. Great. And now we're ready to write down the area for all of these circles put together. So we'll have pi r squared for all of them. So it'll end up looking something like this. We'll have pi and then the sum as n goes from one to infinity and then r squared. So that'll be two minus root three squared times minus one plus root three squared to the n minus one. Okay, so there are a few things to calculate before we get going with our final calculation. So let's do that. So let's first calculate two minus root three squared. So just multiplying that out by binomial expansion will give us four plus three and then minus four times root three. So putting this all together, it's seven minus four root 
three. So like I said, that's our two minus root three quantity squared. And now let's look at this next one. So we'll have minus one plus the square root of three squared. So that ends up being one squared plus square root of three squared. So that will be four minus two root three for the same sort of reason. Okay, so in the end, we'll have seven minus four square root of three times pi after factoring that constant out. And then the sum, as n goes from one to infinity, of four minus two root three all to the n minus one power. But let's notice that four minus two root three is between zero and one. So that means that we can apply the geometric series summation formula to this. And that will leave us with something like this, seven minus four root three times pi over one minus the common ratio. So let's see, one minus the common ratio will give us something like negative three plus two times the square root of three. And if we wanted to, we could rationalize this denominator. So we could do that by multiplying by three plus two root three upstairs and downstairs. And let's see what that'll leave us with. So in the denominator, we'll have four times three, which is 12 minus three squared, which is nine. So we've got a nine in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we'll have seven times three, which is 21 minus eight times three. So that would be 21 minus 24. So that would be minus three. And then 14 minus 12 root three. So that'll be plus two square root of three. And then all of this is multiplied by pi. So that would be the final value for our total area. And that's a good place to stop.